Welcome back Troglodytes to another episode of Troglodytes Guitars. Today we have another one of my favorite series of guitars, the prehistoric Les Pauls. Now there's not really a certain time frame that, you know, Gibson said, okay, we're building prehistoric Les Pauls. That's just kind of the term given to the Les Pauls that were made in reissue style before the custom shop came out and called them historic reissues. So prehistoric just means before the historics, and it just sounds like you got a cool dinosaur. But this is the uh, first uh, 1957 prehistoric I've had. I've had a few of like the uh, 59, 58 styled with like nice sunburst tops. Uh, you can see those videos on my channel. There's also a R6 prehistoric that I've got the P90s that were actually P100s, uh, which are stacked P90s. But this one. It's a 1989 prehistoric R7. So this is based on a 1957 Les Paul, which is basically the first time you see a standard the way you think of it today. Except for no cherry sunburst finish, but you got your ABR1 bridge, traditional tailpiece here, and humbuckers, which would have been uh, PAFs back in the day. But this one, uh, it has the very shortly lived pickup series called the, the Original. Uh, designed by Bill Lawrence and basically on the back they're circuit board pickups they have four different points where you connect all the wires that go there now circuit board usually means Ugh, I don't want that but they're actually really nice pickups and fairly rare but look at the belly on this one very beautiful now this guitar is actually in pretty good shape it's been lightly played you can see some uh, string change wear here on the face of the headstock but Overall, nothing too incredibly bad, just some light scratches and some light dings around the edges. Uh, most of it you could probably polish off, but you can see there's some uh, wear at the top of the headstock. But overall, fairly clean. You have your historic style truss rod cover. It looks pretty good. And obviously, the crazy Gibson logo that is very evident of it being a prehistoric. It, the, you can see the G is kind of caved in on itself and it's a very rounded logo. That's the giveaway that you're looking at kind of a later 80s Les Paul. I love that logo because they were trying to recreate the 50s logo. This one has a beautiful rosewood fretboard. The inlays are nice and aged. They're looking very gold and very similar to the body. Uh, the fretboard and frets were just cleaned, oiled. They're good to go. You have very minor fret wear, and I mean, it's a great player. It truly is. Front of the body here, I know we've looked at a lot at it already, but beautiful top carve on this one. Uh, replaced parts and the knobs have been switched out for kind of a more traditional look. This would have originally came with kind of a more amber color. I think somebody put the golden top hats on there to kind of match the finish a little bit more. But you do have the original thumb bleeders on it yet, which are those little pointy things that, you know, in they're the really days. pokey. And honestly, these are very sharp too. So definitely be careful there or you'll realize why they're called thumb bleeders. All right, but the condition on the top, it's not too bad. I mean, I'll shine the light on it. You can see some light play wear, but you know, for a 1989 guitar, I mean, polish this thing up and it's probably just about good to go. Very beautiful condition, just, you know, light scratches, some smudges from me handling it and playing it, but overall very good. I do want to point out here, the pickguard does have a small crack in it there from over tightening. Nothing to really worry about, but it is there. And you do have the thin binding in the cutaway exposing the maple cap, which is a nice vintage correct uh, appointment to it. Once again, original Bill Lawrence, the original pickups in there. Uh, 88 to 89 is what I quote a lot, but there were a few in very late 87 and very early 1990. You have your Gibson ABR1 patent applied for bridge. I mean, these are worth quite a bit on their own because they look pretty much just like the 60s ones. So overall, I mean, this guitar looks really cool. Out of all the prehistorics, I think the 89s are the most valuable because they look like R9 serial numbers, which are the most popular reissues. So this one has the serial number 9, which signifies 1989, and production 0478. Now, you're going to see this long line, you're going to be like, hey, Trogli, is that a super large crack that you've had repaired there? No, it's just wood grain, and I love stuff like this, because even if your guitar gets stolen, 
and they uh, take your serial number off, you have this huge uh, line here that helps you identify that that guitar is yours. I mean, it runs all the way down to right there. So very cool little uh, characteristic mark of this guitar. No Made in USA stamp. The tuners have been swapped out for a very similar style. Uh, these are a uh, Schaller Deluxe made ones where the original one would have said uh, Gibson Deluxe. On the side of the headstock here, right behind that tuner, you can see a small ding right there. And uh, a little bit of light wear on this side as well, but nothing too bad. Now I would say this neck is more akin to a 60s profile neck. So if you like an R9 and you kind of like a thinner neck, but you like the gold top better, this is like the perfect guitar for you because you got your R9 serial number, your gold top, and your slightly thinner neck. I mean, it's not super thin, it's not SG flat thin. It's got a little bit of roundedness to it. I wouldn't quite call it medium yet, but I would definitely say a very comfortable neck profile. But no major nicks or dings on the neck or anything like that. And you can see you've got some uh, dancing around and actually some legitimate flame on this mahogany neck here. So beautiful neck. Back of the guitar, you've got some light buckle wear, but nothing too bad. And once again, a nice little top here dancing around. I know in uh, an earlier video, I had asked what you guys call it when there's like no lines for flame and somebody said it dances around. I kind of like that so I think I'll use that for now. We've got some dancing guitars here. Oh, the electronics are all original. You got your brown back plates just how they should be. You do have some light wear and tear along the side here but nothing too incredibly bad. There's a small ding right there. They probably thought the input jack was there and boop, nope. Got your original strap buttons yet, miraculously. You can see there is a little bit of bubbling lacquer right under there that could eventually one day chip. But overall, I mean, look at that. I love that. Awesome. This is a really cool guitar. If you are considering purchasing a historic Les Paul, I highly suggest getting one of these prehistoric ones. Because they're they're a little different they're not as historically accurate so if that's what you really want then yeah blow the prehistorics off I mean sure these don't have the long neck tenons they've got short neck tenons yet but Gibson can never make more prehistorics but they can keep pooping out all the historics that they want sure they change things year to year but what's cooler than owning, you know, a vintage now, you know, late 80s, some there are early 80s prehistorics as well. But I really love the late 80s prehistoric Les Pauls. Not only can you say, hey, I've got a prehistoric Les Paul, because that sounds cool, way cooler than saying I've got a historic. I don't know. I'm just a big fanboy of these prehistorics. So I definitely suggest you check one of these out. They're not magical by any means. They're, you know, very similar to a reissue, but there's just, there's something about these. They're just a little more special to me. Take a look under blacklight here to make sure there's no foul play. You've got a few small dings there at the top, but overall nothing too bad. You have some light edge wear to the lacquer though, but you know, it's come to be expected at this age. Front of the guitar, looking at this switch tip under black light, it definitely does look uh, more vintage original. So that might be the original one. I'm not sure what happened to it, but I uh, know the knobs are definitely replaced as they don't glow the way they should. But beautiful guitar, black lights evenly as it should. Back of the headstock here, you can see a small little ding, but once again, nothing too bad. Schaller tuners instead of Gibson Deluxe and once again those aren't breaks cracks or repairs They're just kind of really long mineral lines in the wood Necks in good shape. You don't have any really worn off finish or clear coat to really report And the backs in great shape. There's just this uh, very small area right there by the uh, control plate That has some light clear coat wear But sides of the guitar in great shape as well 
I mean, this is a really clean guitar. I mean, you got a small few dings here and there, but as far as prehistorics go, this one's in good shape and it plays really well and sounds great. This R7 Prehistoric weighs 9 pounds, 9.7 ounces, which is fairly comfortable for a Les Paul. This dinosaur comes in its original Gibson USA case. This is kind of the first generation Gibson Brown case. It came with this uh, thick pink blanket, as they like to call it. Now, I think this one's not quite as thick as some of the other ones I've had, but it is definitely uh, thicker than the small shroud. Now, these just have a nice pink interior. They've got good heel support. I mean, these really are nice cases. Pink interior overall, it's in good shape, houses the guitar well. No super bad smells or anything. It kind of has a uh, guitar polish scent to it, but it's got some original paperwork here. I don't believe any of it was uh, filled out at the factory, unfortunately, or after the warranty owner got it, but you do have that as well as the combination lock paperwork. And you do have uh, this which is cool, I've never seen that before. The cleans will be running through a Gibson Super Gold Tone GA30RV. The dirty tones come from a Marshall JMP1C.
think you might be interested in being the next owner of this prehistoric R7, feel free to contact me on my Facebook page, facebook.com slash troglis, T-R-O-G-L-Y-S, or check out the eBay and Reverb listings. All right, troglodytes, thank you for tuning in today. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed the video, and we'll catch you next time. Take care.